Hello everyone. Many spiritual teachers have said that the purpose of your life is joy. But you may be asking, why? Why is the purpose of my life joy? Today I'm going to do a demonstration that will help you to understand why we can say something like joy is the purpose of your life and really mean it and how that goes hand in hand with universal expansion. For today's exercise, I'm going to be using my trusty right-hand man, Blake Dyer. So let's have him come forward. This is Blake. For this demonstration, Blake is going to be representing my higher self, my non-physical eternal aspect. From non-physical perspective, where he now is, he chooses for the purpose of his own expansion, to project forward into physical form. So let's pretend that I am now the projection of him into physical form, my higher self. Originally, my higher self would choose an intention, like I want to know what love is. And that intention is what begins to collect all of the necessary ingredients that go into a physical life. It attracts your zodiac, it attracts where you're born, it attracts your genetics, it attracts which parents you come down to. When that intention is focused on long enough by my higher self, soon I project forth into the third dimension, the physical dimension. And now I am a zygote. And that develops into a fetus and so on and so forth. So here I am, the physical projection of my non-physical self. But did you notice that when the non-physical self projects forward a physical self, it does not become the physical self. What happens is it becomes now two points of perspective. I am now my physical perspective, but I am simultaneously my non-physical perspective. Because my non-physical perspective is gaining expansion and learning from me, the physical projection. So let's say that your original intention was, I want to know what love is. You would most likely choose to come down to experience a situation with lack of love. Maybe you were adopted when you were younger and your parents didn't want you. Maybe you came down into a family with too many children so they couldn't focus the love towards you that you needed. You would deliberately choose an experience like that because you can only understand love through the absence of love, the same way you can only understand white through the understanding of black or vice versa. That's why they call the physical dimension the contrasting environment. It is based on knowing what you don't want that you know what you do want. So here I am, the physical projection of my non-physical eternal aspect, my source self. Some could call this the higher self. Through understanding the contrast, I am giving rise to my ideas. I'm giving rise to the preference. So let's say that I come down into a family unit that doesn't entirely enjoy my being. Let's say I come down and feel unloved. The minute that I feel unloved, I am giving birth to my idea of what love looks like to me. It is through my knowing what I don't want that I know what I want. And so, when I feel unloved, I give birth to the idea of what loving feels like. That idea is a vibration, a very strong vibration within the universe. And what makes it the most strong is desire. Desire is what tells the universe what to become. Desire tells the universe to match the frequency of the idea that you have just given rise to. So the minute I desire an idea which I have given rise to, my higher self now becomes that expansion. So as you see, I just projected forth my idea of what being loved would feel like by virtue of experiencing what the lack of love feels like. And now my higher self because of the fact that I have desired that idea, has become that vibration. He, it, now stands in that vibration solidly. Why? Because your higher eternal aspect has no resistance. Resistance meaning, 
I want that, but I don't think I can have it. I want that, but no one I know has those things. It has no thoughts that are resistant to nature. And so it becomes the vibration of what you desire immediately. So you and your higher self are a match. You are more or less in alignment, but you are a match in the same way that a magnet is a match to another magnet, because you are the projection of it. And so, let's pretend that this rope is a magnetic pole between my higher self and me, the non-physical aspect and the physical aspect. You must stay a match to you. You can, it's true, develop a gap between yourself and your higher self. A gap is a, a bit of an overstatement because if you were ever to actually have a full gap between you and your higher self, you would cease to exist. But in order to survive, you must stay a match to your non-physical aspect, your higher self. So let's say that this is this magnetic pole that we've got between me and my higher self. The second I give rise to a desire, my higher self, source, is now pulling me in the direction, go ahead and pull me, pulling me in the direction of it. See, so I'm now being pulled, and it is now organizing all of the circumstances, all of the events, all the people necessary for me to realize that is fully manifest that desire in the physical so I can experience that manifestation in the physical. Now, here is where our emotions come into play. If I am thinking a thought which feels emotionally negative to me, that is my indication that vibrationally it is out of alignment with the vibration my higher self now holds. And remember the higher self is now in the exact position of the desire which I have given rise to. So, if I'm feeling negative emotion, that's the indication that the thought that I'm currently holding is in resistance to my higher self. And you feel the pain of that sensation because it's as if you're facing against that magnetic current. That's what negative emotion is. Positive emotion is your indication that you are thinking a thought which is allowing you to flow towards this magnetic current in the direction of your higher self, of your non-physical aspect. And the minute that you meet, share the same position, the same vibration with your non-physical source self, you have manifested your desire. Because remember, your higher self became the vibration of that which you have given birth to in terms of desire. So, your higher self, lining up with your higher self, means that you will manifest whatever it is you have desired. Why? Because you have matched that frequency exactly. So the most important thing to understand about this demonstration is this. If I am feeling negative emotion, that's my indication that the thought that I'm thinking is in opposition to my higher self and therefore my desires. If I'm thinking a thought that feels emotionally positive, then that's my indication that I am allowing myself to go in the direction, allowing myself to line up with my higher self and therefore my desires. This process is the process of expansion because it continues and it continues. The minute that I line up with my higher self, then I give rise from this new platform of contrast to a brand new desire. So now my higher self joins that new frequency. And then if I'm thinking thoughts that are feeling emotionally good to me, I'm lining up with that expansion. And this continues to happen and continues to happen. And so you see, more expansion comes from a being who is able to continually find alignment with their higher self. Because from that alignment, you give rise to new ideas and new preferences, and then the universe is able to expand even farther. Much farther than, say, if you were to, for example, continue to think a negative thought 
for a long, 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 long period and thus never allow yourself to move into the expansion which you have created. You have always created expansion for your non-physical self. But you living the byproduct of that expansion only occurs when you yourself allow yourself to line up with your non-physical aspects and therefore your desires. So it's easy to see, based on this demonstration, that more universal expansion is coming from someone who is able to line up with their non-physical aspect, to line up with and achieve the same vibration as their own desires. Now how does this play into happiness? Like we said, if you're thinking a thought which registers as positive emotion to you, that positive emotion is your indication that the vibration, the thought that you're currently holding, is a match to your non-physical self and your desires, which are standing in the place of expansion for you. If you line up with that expansion, you can now give rise to new desires, which will further the expansion of your eternal aspect. And so, this is why we can say that happiness is the purpose of your life. Because we understand that we are all here for one reason. We are facilitating the expansion of the universe. We are merely extensions of this universe. We are extensions of source energy. And because expansion is the purpose of this universe, and your expansion is a byproduct of you lining up with your joy over and over again. Each time you give rise to a new desire, you allow yourself to flow in the direction of it by thinking thoughts which feel emotionally good to you. Then it is an interchangeable concept that expansion is the purpose of our lives here. And the purpose of your life is joy. Because joy, or happiness, is how you are enabling that expansion to occur. Have a good week.